Right now at 730, SPS wants your input. This morning, information on the public meeting to help decide the new name of three new middle schools. And some states are returning COVID vaccines. And now some of the vaccines will go to two states across the country and those struggling with outbreaks. We talk a lot about how she's been very brave to participate in the trial. This morning, the parents of a child getting the vaccine and researchers talk about the trial that may help the Pfizer vaccine get approved for children in the U.S. Take you outside, talk sunshine working its way out from behind some clouds this morning and what that means for your temperatures later on today. Up with Krim begins now. Well, welcome back to Up with Krem 730 on your Monday. Thanks for hanging out with me, Tim. And it looks like Baxter there. Baxter. Oh, he is such a good boy. Well, it was your <laughs> <laughs> It was your last chance to submit a time for Bloomsday Worldwide yesterday. And I know Tim and Baxter were busy over the weekend. Doomsday Hill, looks like you guys had some fun. Oh. Is he gonna get a finisher shirt? You know, maybe we'll make him a little finisher like bandana or something. Ooh, that you know? so cute. <laughs> oh, why? Yeah, they need to do that. Uh, John Neal, if you're watching, finisher bandanas for dogs. I love it. Oh, what a good idea. Oh, yeah, I actually yeah. wouldn't mind a bandana either. Does yeah. that make me a dog? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> a banana, bandana would be fun. But yeah, it was a, you know, it was a great weekend to run Bloomsday. It wasn't too hot, and by Sunday the winds really died down, so it was actually really great. So it is Monday, though. We are kicking off a fresh new work week. So Jeremy, Here what we can go. we expect this week? Uh, more of the same. Basically, we just keep hitting the repeat button. Unfortunately, that means no widespread moisture in the forecast. And what we wind up seeing is cool mornings and somewhat warm afternoons. We're at 46 degrees right now here in Spokane and close to there from Moses Lake to Coeur d'Alene up into Sandpoint. Wenatchee, you're already up to 50 this morning. I think we'll quickly get up to near 50 by the 8 o'clock hour, close to it at the very least, as we watch showers wind down and clouds move out early this morning. However, it does look like afternoon heating is going to allow another one of those rounds of somewhat isolated showers to develop. Those will once again stick to higher elevations and really be kind of sparse. Tomorrow, another quick round as we get a short wave of energy moving through. Notice early in the day on Tuesday, we start to see a little cloud cover. That should keep us pretty mild tomorrow morning, but here's what you should know. Temps on the rise. I think by 8, we're up close to 50. By 10, we're up close to 60. By 11, we hit 60. And later on this afternoon, temps climb into the upper 60s across the inland northwest. Jeremy, thanks so much. Spokane Public Schools wants your input on the possible names for its three new middle schools, plus a potential renaming of the school currently known as the On Track Academy. Nicole Hernandez joins us now to tell us more about the names they've narrowed down to. Good morning, Nicole. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so one of those new schools is going up behind Mullen Elementary School here. And of course, that one has to be named along with the other two schools. So there were hundreds of submissions that Spokane sent into the Spokane Public School District. And now the district was able to narrow it down to just three potential names for every school that is going up at this point. So all of those different names are either going to represent something that's important to specifically our area or the whole country as a whole. So one of the proposed names for the North Northwest Middle School is to honor the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That school will be at the Joe Albee site. Spokane Public Schools is also considering naming a school after pioneers and trailblazers in our community. One for South Middle School is York, an explorer on the Lewis and Clark expedition. He's known as the first African American to cross North America and reach the Pacific Ocean. That school would be on Mullen Road. One potential name for the Northeast Middle School is Pauline Flett. She is a Spokane tribe leader who was determined to teach and preserve the Salish language. That school would be on Foothills Drive. And then lastly, the district is also considering remaining or considering renaming the On Track Academy building. Now, this Wednesday, the school board is actually going to be reviewing all of the finalists of those names. And you can this is where you can actually bring your comments and let the school district know what you think. If you're interested in a link with information on how to comment and a Zoom link to attend that meeting, you can text the word school to 509-448-2000 and then the final decision is expected on May 26th. The district will be making that decision in their 26th scheduled meeting. In Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Thank you, Nicole, for that update. Well, just over a third of the U.S. population is now fully vaccinated against the coronavirus vaccine.
uh, COVID. But 14 states have less than 40% of their populations partially vaccinated, with Mississippi at the bottom. Yeah, and this comes as more states actually turn down doses. Across the nation, states are scaling back orders for the COVID-19 vaccine as demand for shots actually declines, including right here in Washington. Well, right now, the federal government allocates vaccines to states based on population size. It's then up to the states to decide how many doses they want to order every week. Now states are asking for less vaccines. North Carolina and Washington want 40% less. Well, the Biden administration announced this week that surplus vaccines will be used to meet the demands in other states and eventually they could be given out to other countries. Pfizer could uh, expected to be available to children ages 12 to 15. Researchers are now testing the vaccine in kids as young as six months old to see if it's safe and effective. Wiggle, wiggle. Now this is Eloise LaCour. This is a video of her receiving her second vaccine. She's part of the study testing Pfizer's vaccine on those children. Dr. Yvonne Milando leads the research at Stanford University School of Medicine. She says they plan to enroll a few thousand children to see if it is safe and effective for younger children. They're currently working to find out the full dose. What doses are the lowest doses that produce the best immune response with the least um, side effects? While the numbers look small, they are still important. People under 18 make up over 20% of the U.S. population. And if we want to reach herd immunity, it is going to be important to tap in to that population as well. Children now make up about 25% of the COVID-19 infections, and that number is growing. Kids are less likely to have severe COVID or right. coronavirus, but Dr. Milando says thousands have been hospitalized, so they say it's critical to get their shot. Well, health experts now say because of vaccine hesitancy, herd immunity may never be achieved. So if not that, what signals are health officials looking to, to determine if it's safe to fully reopen? Well, a UW professor says it's difficult to pinpoint. There's a lot of COVID-19 circulating in our communities right now. The bad news is it's going to be very difficult to get rid of it. President Biden and national health experts say they're focused on getting as many people vaccinated as possible and managing the virus that is likely to stick around. Well, here are three things you need to know about coronavirus today. With more Americans vaccinated, we could soon see change to indoor mask mandates. Yeah, one of the things Dr. Fauci says the country could soon do is take a seasonal approach to masks. For example, wear them during the flu season. Well, he did point out that flu numbers are so low this year because many people have worn masks and masks could help the COVID stay at bay in the long run. Number two, the CDC is now recommending pregnant women get the COVID-19 vaccine. A preliminary report from the largest study so far on coronavirus vaccine safety in expectant mothers looked at the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. The results of the study showed pregnant women had no major difference in side effects when compared to women who were not pregnant. Number three, vaccine developers Pfizer and BioNTech will donate doses for athletes and officials preparing for the Tokyo Olympics. Delivery of doses is set to begin this month. It gives enough time to be fully vaccinated with a second shot before arriving in Tokyo for the Games. And after the break, if you watched the Kentucky Derby last weekend, you saw the Medina Spirit win that race. However, the horse may have to give up the trophy. We're going to tell you why after the break. And coming up in the next half hour of Up With Krem, most of us have received our taxes by now, and the IRS is sending out audits. So we're talking about the main reason why you at home could be audited. And we're also going to take you outside, talk a mild day today with temperatures on the rise as we move through the week. You're going to want to stick around with the ChemCare's diaper drive. That wrapped up last night. And we just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone who donated. Your efforts will provide families diapers and wipes. Our partners at Rose Hours and Washington Trust Bank have been taking the donations for the past two weeks, and we'll make sure to tally the numbers and report them to you next week.